Well, here we are back in the garage working on the waste oil burning water heater. If you uh, haven't been watching the, uh, the build series so far, I uh, recommend you go back and check out this build from the, uh, the start. There's uh, four other parts that uh, precede this video, so please uh, go check those out. Uh, don't forget to, uh, of course, like and subscribe if you're uh, enjoying this uh, build series. So in the end of our previous video, we did a test burn and it was by far the best results that we'd achieved with this uh, burner configuration so far. So it was using the blower uh, and I found adding that swirlator inside of the flue made a big difference. So to give us some numbers here, uh, you know, an understanding of how much heat this unit is outputting, um, I took the uh, starting temperature, which was 18 degrees Celsius, the uh, finish temperature, which was 95 degrees Celsius. The approximate volume of the water jacket here, I figured it's about six and a half gallons. And uh, the time that it took to get that water up to temperature, using an online calculator, I was able to come to a number about 27,300 BTUs of thermal energy went into heating that water in that period of time. That's of course assuming about a 60% uh, efficiency, which is quite impressive actually for this little build, considering that uh, all we're looking at is uh, a truck tire rim, a 20 pound propane tank, a 30 pound propane tank, and uh, a little bit of scrap steel. So overall, the performance of this unit is uh, quite impressive. Now that we've got the uh, waste oil burner running really well, I'm, like I said, pleased that uh, we were able to get those uh, those really uh, high temperatures and uh, good heat transfer going there. It's time to move on to uh, some plumbing for this water heater, and uh, that's going to involve uh, connecting some copper lines, three quarter inch tubing from the this is the outlet here. Then we have our inlet down here at the bottom. Uh, we're going to route these down the side and have a couple of fittings uh, hard mounted to the side of the rim there that we can use to connect to, I don't know, other kind of heat exchangers or maybe even a soaking tub or something. But uh, we're gonna get that set up now, uh, make it a little more functional just so it's not heating only the water in the, uh, the vessel itself, but uh, actually put it to some use. Well, that didn't take too long. Working with copper is uh, pretty easy. So what I've done is uh, just come up with a little bit of an elbow here uh, because the outlet on the top of the tank kind of comes out at this odd angle. I've just used uh, a 90 and then a street 90 here just to kind of navigate that bend. And it also just kind of helps get us off to the side so we can kind of run parallel to this uh, feed uh, inlet here. And so what I'm gonna do now is just come up with a little bracket that I can uh, make out of some flat bar, just bend a couple uh, tabs off of it and then have these two uh, basically uh, firmly attached down there. I'm not too worried about expansion on the copper for this type of length we're looking at, like a hundredth of an inch um, of expansion for going from basically freezing all the way up to boiling. Uh, this unit really isn't ever gonna run at boiling temperature. It'll probably be running if I do use it for heating a space, it'll probably be running about 90 at the most. So uh, I'm not too worried about that expansion, but um, yeah, time to get that bracket made up and we'll weld that on. And then we can get all of this soldered together and uh, move on to the next part. There we go, I've got the uh, bracket welded in place. Um, I've got the uh, little 90s here. These are three quarter to three quarter. They're bolted in here. And the reason I wanted some substance here is I intend to hang off of that, uh, this circulating pump. Uh, this is just temporarily set up. Ignore the arrow, it's supposed to be pointing that way. I'll have to switch that around after. But uh, I'm gonna use these uh, quick connect couplings here for uh, connecting the uh, 
the feed and return uh, from the uh, water heater to uh, whatever source I want. But uh, more or less, this is the uh, the plumbing arrangement for the uh, the water heater. So I'm going to take this apart and uh, get all these copper fittings cleaned up, get some flux on them and uh, get them soldered in place. And once that's done, I can get uh, these fittings in place and uh, that will complete the uh, plumbing for the uh, the water heater. So the, the nice thing I should add is that um, this circulating pump will actually disconnect here. This is a bit of a union, if you will, and there is a rubber uh, washer in there that connects it. So this won't be hanging out, sticking out that far all the time. Basically get it into place where you want it and then put the pump on. So yeah, I'm gonna get this uh, soldered up. So here we go. There we go. All of the uh, copper joints are soldered up. I did have to redo that one there. It didn't look like it had uh, gotten enough solder into the connection. So I made sure it was by taking it apart and cleaning it and putting it back together again. But uh, overall, that uh, turned out pretty good. I'm happy with how that looks. Um, next step will be just to let these cool down and then I can get some of the fittings attached to uh, the inlet, the outlet, so the inlet goes up into the bottom, uh, outlet comes from the top down and out to uh, whatever we're trying to heat. So yeah, next step we'll be getting that uh, element in and um, I think we'll be getting pretty close to done here. Well, here we go. The waste oil burning water heater is complete. Everything is ready to go. Uh, I've uh, finished all of the plumbing. The circulating pump is uh, ready to go. We have our electric heating element. Uh, there is a cable that will just connect to that when needed. As I'd mentioned before, it does plug into the back of the control box. The controller has uh, the metering pump this would connect up to an oil reservoir and the top one here connects into the uh, oil feed inside of the burner. We have our burner fan and we have the inside of our combustion chamber. It's seen some good use already and uh, it's gonna see quite a bit more. Overall, I'm very pleased with the build. It's turned out very well and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, getting this unit hooked up and uh, getting it uh, heating some real water for us. Uh, but that will be in another video, so I'm not gonna go really beyond this right now, but um, I hope you've enjoyed this series so far, and uh, I do plan on making another uh, waste oil burning water heater. It would actually be more of a boiler style, and so that'll be coming in the new year. So be sure to uh, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss that, and um, we'll see you soon.